welcome to Gamecast Informer, the daily news show that keeps you in the know on what's hot and occasionally not so hot. My name is The Voice at 106.7, otherwise known as Vox within the Gamecast circle. The Count's news may be unscripted, but that just means you get to listen to my soothing voice non-stop, whispering sweet nothings into your ears. Like so. Sweet nothings. And now, for the news. Bootlegging the classics. Nintendo is not happy. We've all seen bootleg games, right? Hell, some of us have possibly even owned some of these games at some point. Bootlegging has been around since the early days of gaming, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopped anytime soon. The NES Classic Edition has been discontinued by Nintendo, but bootleggers are just getting started and have been selling pretty convincing fast mills for very authentic money. Hundreds of dollars, in fact. According to Kyle Orlin from ARS Technica, these fakes are difficult to distinguish from the actual thing, but some of the only discrepancies being misaligned logos, faded finishes, or minuscule differences within the UI itself. Even the boxes are being made as close to the real thing as possible. All in all, buyer beware. If you're looking to purchase an NES on eBay, Make sure to request current pictures of the hardware from the seller so you can make sure that you're buying an authentic product. Otherwise, you might just be taken to town. 50 terabyte SSDs exist now, but don't expect to see them in your neighborhood micro center anytime soon. Viking Technology, division of the San Mina Corporation. Uh, no, that's the Umbrella Corporation logo. Yeah, there we go. As I was saying, a world-leading company with contracts in communications, defense, aerospace, industrial, and the medical fields, this technological powerhouse of a company has bestowed upon the world the very first 50 terabyte solid-state drive. Well, as far as we know, anyway. This behemoth of a solid-state drive is 3.5 inches, which is pretty standard size for a solid-state, but is not designed for consumer use. Instead. This beast is designed for the use in data centers and server farms. With a 6 gigabyte per second serial attached SCSI interface, a 500 megabyte per second read, and a 350 megabyte per second write time, this monster of a solid state is nothing to sneeze at. At the current time, there have been no mentions as to the price of said drive. Nintendo announces Ultra Sun slash Ultra Moon, getting three special editions in Europe. Amazon announced a special dual pack when Sun and Moon were released last year. Well, it seems they're at it again. This time with an Ultra. Huh? Huh? See what I did there? Special dual steelbook pack that shows the new Solgaleo and Lunala on the covers, with their respective theme colors. The interiors of said steelbooks are the same legendaries on a gold background. The second and third special editions for the European consumers will feature the games in their own separate steelbooks, with their respective mascot being proudly displayed on the cover, while the interior of these steelbooks will feature Pokeball artwork. The price for these fan editions, quote unquote, is as of yet unknown, but expect them to cost more than the individual pricing of these games, currently set at $40 per pre order. Now that we've gotten the news out of the way, allow me to rant a little. See, I have a bone to pick with Nintendo, and more specifically, Game Freak, about this new Pokemon game, Sun and Moon. These games, in and of themselves, were personally a disappointment. The story was lackluster, the characters were forgettable, and the Pokemon were very... meh. Z-moves were interesting, sure, but they were just an additional power-up for literally every Pokémon. Any Pokémon, when equipped with the right gem, could use the same powered move, depending on the element. It reminds me of that old adage, when everyone is special, no one is. And sure, there were specific gems for specific Pokémon, but guess what? Those are called Mega Stones, and the way it was going, every Pokémon was well on their way to receiving Mega Stones. 
It feels like the devs at Game Freak got lazy and decided to, instead of making more Mega Stones and giving the receiving Pokemon new designs and such, the Z Crystals were a catch-all so that consumers would get the same powered-up experience without having to create additional animations. Now, I understand that creating a new video game and animating said game is not easy. I respect the work and effort, but at some point, one has to wonder, is it worth it anymore? It's the exact same formula, over and over and over for the past 20 years. There's a kid, there's a challenge, there's a team, there's a crisis, there are legendaries. Lather, rinse, repeat. But you know, at least there was some variance among the games. At least they found a way to make it interesting and entertaining. Then came the Black and White 2 games. This is the first time that Nintendo had purposefully recycled the story. Sure, there were different versions of games, but the story was the same. But that's the thing, they were different versions. No, these were direct sequels and such recycled stories. It, much to my surprise, th those games did well, very well. In fact, I can't fathom why. The games were largely forgettable to me, but not to the rest of the fanbase, apparently, so maybe there's a little bit of weirdness to me, but I digress. Now we come to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Close to identical from what I can tell, and the story will most likely fail to impress, just as they did for Sun and Moon. Honestly, they could have just called them Sun and Moon 2. But people will continue to buy them. Why? Because Pokemon. That's why. There. Rant over. I apologize if I made some people angry, and I apologize if my rant was not exactly sensical. But that's why it's called a rant. And that wraps it up for today's news and rant. Remember to leave your opinions in the comments below, to like, share, and subscribe, and to give Gamecast a shout out in our Discord. We're also available on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been The Voice at 106.7, your favorite news anchor, and not Count Fracula. Gaming news now.